Good evening, everyone, and welcome to week eight of the high school football season tonight. It's the Wellsboro Green Hornets coming in at one and six, taking on the South Williamsport Mounties at three and three. Coach, we were just here last Thursday to field after a week of rain here. Looks in pretty good shape, though. He's in pretty decent shape. The field has come a long, long way over the years. Believe me when I tell you that one. So it doesn't appear that footing should be a tremendous issue tonight. There are a couple of usual soft spots, or it seems eternally soft, even if it doesn't rain for nine years. But all in all, footing should not be an issue tonight. Yeah, let's say let's talk a little about Wellsboro. They struggled an injury-filled season, one and six. We say this all the time: don't let the record fool you. They had Montoursville on the ropes in week one. They had Muncie on the ropes too. Two late, tough losses, but injuries. Connor Adams, the quarterback, was out for multiple weeks. Now he's back. Started a quarterback for four years. They went with Will Gastruck now. Connor, the best athlete probably on this team. They moved him the wide receiver coach, and that paid dividends immediately last week. Well, three receptions, 133 yards, and three touchdowns. That's pretty good productivity, especially after being out for so long. And it's interesting that you mentioned both of those losses to quality teams. You know, and, and those losses came late in the second half for both of those teams. You know, Montours will struggle a little bit, but we saw Muncie last week. So, you know, it, it depends on what Wellsboro team is going to show up because they have had injury issues. They're starting to get healthy at the right time. They still have a couple kids that are going to be out for a while, but they're on the men. Sure, sure. And and Will Gastrock, and we talked about the sophomore, five foot seven. 150 pounder has 290 yards, four touchdowns. He has thrown six interceptions, but he's learning on the job as he goes. We're going to see a lot of four receiver sets for this team, coach. We talked about that in our in our pre-production meeting. There, tell us a little bit about the wideouts. Well, they, they've got a couple of, a couple of quality wideouts, but you're going to see primarily sometimes what Paul's going to say quads tonight. Four receivers split out to one side, no tight end. And they've had a bevy of receivers from, from Poyer to, you know, as we said last week with Adams coming back. They're the two big targets. They don't like to run the ball a whole lot. I don't foresee them being able to run the ball with much success tonight because they're undersized up front. Sure, and they also have Spencer Wetzel, 17 receptions, a buck 58 on the season and two touchdowns. Joe Brown, number 11. We see him in the backfield a little bit. You see him at wide out. It does not look like he is dressed. We did not see him in warm-ups. He's out an injury. Leads the team with 19 receptions last week. Did not play. Not sure what the injury is, but a loss of Joe Brown. He's a big kid. That's going to hurt. So they lose one and get one back, and that seems to be the, the way it's gone for Wellsboro. And they're no strangers. Both of these teams played twice last year. In the regular season at Wellsboro, Wellsboro won the game 17-7. to And then the last time these two teams met was right on the field last year in the District 4 AA. South was AA last year, quarterfinal game, and South took it to them pretty good, beat them 36-7. But this has been a very even and a very good rivalry over the years. Uh, and again, it's, we'll see what unfolds tonight. But on, if you're playing on paper, South should win this handily. But as we all know, we don't play the game on paper. Now it's played right behind us on those fans. I do the voice of the frozen tundra on the frozen tundra of South Williams Square. But it's 60-some degrees. It's warm, Coach. Let's talk a little bit about the Mounties. Last week we were here for Thursday night football. For the most part, they outplayed Muncie the whole game. They did. They outplayed them on the lines of scrimmage on both sides of the ball, as you mentioned, and very easily could have won the game. Unfortunately, they had some timeout issues. That cost them with clock management at the end of the game. And that happens sometimes. Those things occur. But they had nothing to hang their heads about. I think South's kids, you know, didn't need it that game last week, especially after the way they played at Canton. And they now know that they can play with, with good football teams at their, that are their side. Absolutely. And, and they're going to run, run, run. As we said, a three-headed monster last week. Two running backs, Casella and Kem, were both over 100 yards. Caden Harris had a really good game. He went out early with an injury, but he's back tonight. Well, South likes to run the football. That's almost, you know, and everybody knows that. I look for Wellsboro to come out with some type of a 5-3 defense tonight. And I think they'll crowd the line of scrimmage with at least eight people, try to play a soft cover three zone or man coverage every once in a while. They're going to have to do whatever they have to do 
to stop the line of scrimmage tonight and stop South Surrey game. All right, Coach, your keys to the game. Well, we'll start with South Williamsport first. Very easy. Keep the ball, run the ball, don't fumble the ball. The longer they have the ball and they're in possession of it, Wellsboro doesn't have it. For Wellsboro, the opposite. They're going to have to strike early. They're going to have to get time to throw the football. If they do that, they've got just enough receivers to make this an interesting game tonight. I don't know if they have enough on the lines of scrimmage to play with South for four quarters. Well, Coach, as you said, the game is played on the field. It's the Green Hornets and the Mounties. WebWeeklyLive.com. We are powered by PA Sports Live. Thanks for watching the Blaze Alexander Kickoff Show. It's coming up next. Hi, Blaze and Lyle here. And Lyle doesn't always drive a Chevy truck, but when he does want a Chevy, he knows to go to BlazeAlexander.com. With over 20 locations across Pennsylvania and thousands of cars to choose from, BlazeAlexander.com is your one place to shop for both sales and service. So let Lyle help you fetch your next vehicle only at BlazeAlexander.com. With so many great cars to choose from, Lyle doesn't always drive a Nissan, but when he does, he goes to BlazeAlexander.com. With over 20 locations across Pennsylvania and thousands of cars to choose from, BlazeAlexander.com is your one place to shop for both sales and service. So let Lyle fetch your next new vehicle at BlazeAlexander.com. We dress up every corner of your home. We have the perfect mattress from the Best Sleep Gallery so your delivery is immediate and free. And we have that stylish new appliance with the latest feature and finish with digital price tags that scan the market to ensure you get the lowest price. Our own installer, service technicians, and delivery crews with live crew tracking so your delivery day is as free as you need it to be. Serving our people, serving our planet. We are Biter's Furniture Mattress and Appliance. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Rodney K. Morgan Stadium. Paul Bo, alongside the coach, Rich Salonis. We are on webweeklylive.com. Powered by PA Sports Live. Coach, tonight, South Williamsport playing host to the Wellsboro Green Hornets. Captains are outside on the 50-yard line right now for the toss. And I did not see who won the toss. I'm sorry. I mean, either did I, Paul. I did not happen to see it as I was Somebody checking. deferred. Whoever won, they deferred. Checking some rosters. A beautiful night for football. It yeah, seems like we were just here. Yeah, and we, we were for that Thursday night football. And I told you, Coach, better than Amazon Prime we had it up here. It was a great game. It was a great small school football game. Hey, let's, let's take a break for the anthem real quick, and we'll be back. Lyle doesn't always drive a Ram truck, but when he does decide he wants one, he goes to find it on BlazeAlexander.com. <laughs> With over 20 locations across Pennsylvania and thousands of cars to choose from, BlazeAlexander.com is your one place to shop for both sales and service. So let Lyle help you fetch your next vehicle only at BlazeAlexander.com. Family table away from home is Dolly's Diner, now with three great locations. The original Dolly's Loyal Sock behind Rita's off the Golden Strip. Dolly's Mentorsville, where Dolly met Griggs. And now the new Dolly's Park Avenue, Williamsport, formerly Donna's Restaurant. For those amazing breakfasts, daily and chef specials, sticky buns and more, and Griggs Coffee and Peanuts. Don't miss it. Dolly's Diner, your family table away from home, covering the Williamsport area. Welcome to another season of Friday Night Lights. Come see us at Park Pizza here in Williamsport, our original location, or inside the Gamble Farm Inn in Jersey Shore. This is where we get it done, improving everybody's quick turnover, everybody's agility, everybody in transitional sprints, all ages, all sports. You want it, we got it, come to Fast Mass. Hi, I'm Rennie Rodarmel, 
I run the Rennie Road Armal Agency located at 921 Westminster Drive, Williamsport, Pennsylvania. I think my passion is, is meeting with the uh, customers one-on-one, -on -one, reviewing all their needs and uh, doing the best job we can to make sure they have the, the best available coverage at the best price. This agency stands out above a lot of them as far as customer service. Our philosophy is not to tell a customer what they need to do. We need to know what they want us to do for them and take care of them. All right, welcome back here to South Williamsport. Wellsboro will be kicking off. Jack Poyer will kick it off for the Green Hornets. And back deep is Caden Harris and Ryan Casella. And we are just about set to go underway, get underway. And away we go from South Williamsport. High end over end kick fielded by Casella at the 10. And he put a knee down right there. And that's where the Mounties are going to start off, Coach. Yeah, a little bit of a mental miscue to start the game for South Williamsport. And for Chris Eisworth, Mountaineers tonight at quarterback. We've got Radley Knapp, Casella and Harris, and Amir Kemmerer will be in the backfield at one time or another. Tight end when they use one, Connor Apker, Gephardt, Scheller, Smith, and Garrett Cooley will be your wideouts. For the Wellsboro Green Hornet defense, 53 front, Hayes Campbell, Levi Stone, Trevor Ash, your nose, Wyatt Gastrock, and Cameron Brott at the end. Your linebackers, Blake Levandusky, Ryder Bowen, Hayden Stevens in your secondary, Jack Poyer, Connor Adams, and Spencer Wetzel. Here's a hand up to Cassell, and he almost broke that one as he has tripped up a gain of five on the play. And Coach, he looked like he was off to the races there, but couldn't see which uh, one of the Hornets. I think 52 got his hand in there. That would be Blake Levandusky. And Wellsboro's linebackers are very active. Keep an eye on defensive end Cameron Brott as he leads the Hornets in tackles. Yeah, we saw Casella here Thursday night have a super game. But one of two backs over 100 yards for the Mounties. Come out again now. And that's Knapp under center. Little play action. Knapp back to pass looking down the field. Throws and that is almost intercepted. Radley Knapp was, was looking downfield for Gephardt on a play action, one-man pattern post. Wellsboro was all over it, had it defensed well, but I'll tell you what, it was a nice ball by the youngster. He put it up and, and got some air underneath it, and that's the way you want to throw the post pattern. And by the way, uh, Radley Knapp still in the eighth week of the season, the only area quarterback that has not thrown an interception. Hasn't thrown a ton, but still in all. That's a, that's a good stat to have into the eighth week. They're coming out trips here to the bottom of your screen. One setback. And Knapp back to pass. Looks for that quick slant. Got it. That is Harris. Out of the backfield. 15 sidesteps a man and vaults his way across the 20. And that'll be a first down for the mounts. A quick swing pass and make that quick bubble screen to Harris. A part of your rush game. And it was good enough to get South Williamsport a first down. So first three plays, two of them in the air for South Williamsport. Now they come back. First down and 10, ball at the 20-yard line. And a handoff to Casella again. Burst through the middle. And he is into the secondary, and ball comes out. Oh, they're going to call him down, and we have a flag. So we've got a whole bevy of things going on. We saw the flag go up in the air back away from the play. Well, that was a very late flag. And they ruled them down already, so we'll see if it's going to be a block in the back or what the deal is going to be here. Again, a big off-tackle hole for Casella to rumble through. And Well, the first play of the game, Coach, they tripped him up or he was off to the races. And we're going to see what the flag is. And that is going to be against South Williamsport. It's going to be a 15 yard penalty. And now they're going to be back behind the sticks. Unfortunately, you know, South hurt themselves there with the penalty. Double tight end set here. Now a handoff to the up back. And nowhere to go into the heart of that defense. 
And that was Cooley, number eight. And he's come of age here the last three or four weeks for South Williamsport. Must have been a personal foul. Not sure what that call was, Coach. Well, I'm looking on the official's chart. That's why I've been silent, and there's no, there's no signal for that particular motion that the official made. It's going to be second down. And Knapp again, handoff Casella again, and once again tripped up as he hits that hole hard. And I believe that was Ryder Bowen that got his hand in there to just make the tackle from his backer spot. Looked like it was his number. Casella comes into the season, 53 carries, 317 yards, averaging five yards a carry, Coach. So now a big down for the Hornets. Listen, uh, <clears throat> You know, as long as Wellsboro can make South snap the ball, we have talked about their fumble issues earlier in the year. But so far it's been easy trudging, and that's just a physical run for another South first down. They had him in the backfield, but Casella willed his way to a first down. Another first down for the Mountaineers. Casella four carries, 37 yards already in the early going. And South will snap the ball with about nine minutes, just under nine minutes to go in the first quarter. First down again, handoff again to the up back. That is Cooley. And not much there. And they're again, <laughs> Wellsboro pointing that they have the ball. Well, the ball came out before the whistle came out, but they ruled them down before the whistle blew. And that's how everything went no pun intended, down on that play, but it is South ball. And listen, South, with the exception of the, that post play, play action earlier, they're going to run the ball. Wellsboro's sure. doing a good job of crowding the box. They've got eight men in the box on first and second down, but South's just able to get, get space, and, and they've been able to get good yards. Eight minutes to go in the first quarter. A little play action. Knapp rolling. Throws down the middle of the field. Has a man down there, and that ball is almost picked off again. Adams on the coverage again. I'll tell you what, Connor Adams twice now in perfect position. Yeah, they were looking they were looking for another post pattern, and he was open initially, but a little bit too much air was put under that pass, and Adams should have come down with that interception. Now, throwback screens. Last week, Coach Eisworth pulled out a reverse, which was a very good call on the third and long. So let's see what South's going to come up with here. Big down for the Hornets to see if they can stop South's initial drive. Third down and 8, 8.14 to go in the first quarter. And in motion is Harris. Knapp rolling back out. Blindside did not see him at all, and he took a big hit, Coach. He did, and that was uncontested. Backside defensive end for the Hornets. Hayes Campbell came flying through there untouched. I'll tell you what. South's lucky that that wasn't a turnover. I said Knapp was lucky to get that ball because he never saw him coming from his blind side there. Cassell on to punt it away. Nobody blocked him. He was unaccounted for. And Poyer back deep along with Adams. And a line drive kick takes a bounce. Oh. And Adams picks it up and down he goes at the 15 yard line. Wow. Not sure if he touched it all. He did touch it. it. He did touch it, and then he looked like maybe nobody saw him touch it. He was kind of malaise getting back to pick the ball up. 8 one to go in the first quarter. Wellsboro with their first possession of the game. And we've got Will Gastrock, the sophomore at quarterback, Ryder Bowen and or Hayden Stevens at a H-back or running back. Up front, Brott, Stone, Gastrock, Lewandowski, and Campbell. Adams, Wetzel, Masco, and Poyer, your receivers. In motion is Adams Gastrick from the gun. Actually from the pistol, now pitches it. About him. And Bowen up across the, close to about the 20 yard line there. About three yard gain on first down. Yeah, that by a couple of South linebackers who are very active. South linebacking core had a great game on Thursday versus Muncie. Speaking of that, up front, the ends for South Williamsport, Ryan Fry, Connor Apker. Tackles, Evan Tortelay and Ben Ferris playing very good football for the Mountaineers as a sophomore. Your linebackers inside, Casella and Bowersox. Cooley and Kistner outside. Harris, Kemmerer, and free safety, Landon Gephardt. They're going four wide here now. Gastruck from the gun. And Gastruck back to pass. Looks, throws down the sidelines, in and out of the hands of Adams. 
as Adams had a step on the defender there. Well, if I'm correct, that's two passes that he's dropped so far, one defensively and one offensively. Wellsboro cannot afford to make those mistakes tonight. He was open. It was a good pass. He just dropped it. Yeah, third down and six now as the ball is up at the 19-yard line. And 7.14 to go in the opening frame here. Beautiful night in South Williamsport. Thanks for tuning in. WebWeeklyLive.com, powered by PA Sports Live. And they're going to go from the pistol. Once again, four wide motion is Adams. Back to pass, three-step drop, steps up, throws, passes. A little too high as he overshot Adams, who had a step on the defender again. Paul, he was running free down the sideline. He was open by four or five yards, and those are two overshots. Well, one overshot on that one for Gastrock, the sophomore, and the other one should have been caught. So Wellsboro's had its opportunities, and Poyer's going to come in to punt. You know, they ran the other receiver down the field, and, and underneath they, they ran Adams, and he was wide open. And Ferris was bearing down on him, but he still threw a fairly decent pass, just a little bit too much mustard on it. Player drops it, kicks high, kick. Fair cut, Colfer, and made at the 47, 48-yard line for Casella. Let's take a break. We'll be back to South Williamsport. When you want the best, go to the best. Fairfield Auto Group has been giving you the best deals, service, and experience since 1986. Whether you visit their original Ford and Volkswagen store in Montoursville, their second Ford dealership in Williamsport, or their Chevy stores in Lewisburg and Montgomery, you'll be sure to find it at Fairfield. Fairfield for fantastic deals. And off Casella banging his way and leaning forward for about four yards. And their first down plays when they have been on the ground, they're attacking off tackle in. Oh, that Wellsboro, who's presenting them with an eight-man front, which is usually very difficult to run against, but I'm sure Coach Eisworth and his staff will be happy with three and four yards a shot. So a second down and seven coming up for the Hornets as South is in their territory after they flip the field. Five carries, 39 yards in this first quarter for Casella. Knapp taps the center, handoff. Cooley. And Coach, we, we haven't seen Caden Harris yet in the ball game, I don't believe. Well, he was we? in for a couple plays. Had him at receiver. They tried to hit him on a post Wait, He earlier. caught the pass. I'm and just... that was Ryder Bone with another tackle. So a lot of the tackles we're seeing from Wellsboro are big chunk yardage gainers saving tackles. Where if the tackle's not made, South backs are going to be running for a long time. 6.05 trips to the bottom of your screen. Single setback is Casella. Now back to pass, looks, throws over the middle, caught by Harris. Harris trying to break free and he's down to about the 36, 37 yard line. That will be enough for a first down. And that's two times they've thrown that quick screen out there to Caden and he's done a nice job fighting for the first down. One thing we're not seeing Wellsboro's defensive linemen do is get their hands up. If you can't get to the passer, you need to get your hands up and affect the trajectory of the pass, especially the short passes that South's been throwing, that's twice for that play. And you know what, Coach Knapp's not taking a deep drop either. Nope. A hand up there. Two carries, 15 yards, or two receptions, 15 yards. Casella down score. the sidelines and he's gonna go untouched. And he is in 35 yard touchdown run by Ryan Casella, Coach. Nobody there. Nope. South's gonna come out, they're gonna run one of their patented power plays right off tackle. They get a good seal down and no one touches Casella. He's on his way, you'll see it right here. There you go, Wellsboro's end comes up field two four and there's nobody in the secondary and South's off to a six nothing lead. Caden Harris is gonna be on for the extra point. Give him six carries, 70, bad snap there. Harris picks the ball up and down he goes. So the point after the try will be no good. For Casella, six carries, coach, 75 yards, and a touchdown. Timeout in the field. South leads 6 0. We'll be right back. Fast Mass, Speed Agility, and Quickness Camp. This is where we get it done. Improving everybody's quick turnover, everybody's agility, everybody in transition with sprints. All ages, all sports. You want it, we got it. Come to Fast Mass.
is your free lifetime warranty on every new car that you buy. Even after it's yours, we still take care of it like it's one of ours. Brian, after 11 years, you're still washing my car. For the last 80 years, we've worked hard to serve our community. We've added more and more dealerships to fulfill your needs. Whether you're looking for a new Ford, Mazda, or Chevy, knowing you have a peace of mind with our free lifetime warranty, you're covered forever. With every new vehicle, Murray Motors gives you a free lifetime warranty. That's a real deal. All right, South Williamsport on the board. 35-yard run by Ryan Casella. Point after, no good. And Caden Harris will kick off. Paul, that penalty has been killing me since the first series. I think it was a sideline interference penalty against South. And there's a short kick fielded by one of the up men. And the is going to have great field position. They are. It took them a while to get on the ball, but finally one of the Hornets, I believe it was Levi Stone, one of the offensive linemen, decided to pounce on it. Well, Wellsboro had its chances on two off two of their four or three offensive plays to start their first series. Passes were either overthrown and or dropped. Gastrock's going to line up from the pistol again. In motion is Adams. Here's a pitch. Bowen running to the right side. Stretches his way and... That ball came out too, but he was on the yeah, he was on the, turf. the ground there, stretching it a little bit. Initially, that looked like it was going to be a bigger gain than yeah. what it was. But Wellsboro has a lot of speed, coach. I can just see the speed there. They do. They got to the corner quickly. The South played that fairly well. But they did exactly what you said cannot happen: is get behind in this ball game. They got to weather the storm. Four forty-nine to go in the first quarter. Second drive of the game. Big possession here. Gastrock, two to the top, one at to the bottom. As Gastrock again, handoff. Bowen turns the corner, first down, bulldozes his way close, little short, coach. He is, he's going to be about a half a yard short. It looked initially like he was going to get that. Yeah, I got a little ahead of myself. I don't think he was going to go right across the 50, but they're going to mark it back at the 49-yard line. It's going to be third down and probably less than a yard at 4.18 to go. And I know Gastrock's not the biggest young man in the world, but for me, if I'm Wellsboro, I'm going to sneak this under center get the first down, keep the clock moving. Right at midfield as same formation here for the Green Hornets. Gastrock. And we have, it's gonna be a false start coach and third and I, one becomes third I, and six. I don't know who moved. I didn't see any movement, but apparently there was enough. <clears throat> and that changes everything now if you're, sure. if you're Wellsboro. And they've been their own worst enemy. Yep, three. That, that first drive, if I may, Paul, you know, South had a couple of chunk plays, but nothing major. They forced South to snap the ball, and they ended up forcing a punt. It's imperative for them to keep the chains moving here. Yep, three receivers set. Gastruck from the gun again. Third and six. and Bowen trying to twist his way, and he's going to be short. Now fourth down and two, Coach. Uh, you've got to punt it, in my opinion, but my opinion doesn't count. I'm not coaching. There's 3.20 left and counting in the first quarter. I think you're going to go for it here. Maybe they'll try and draw. Boyer is the punter, so he's always out there. So we'll see. Well, they're going to come out, and they're going to go for it. Well, this is a, if, if they do snap it, this is going to be a big play well, They got single the coverage game. down here on Poyer. See if they take a shot down the sidelines. Gastrock hands it off, and he's short. And he's definitely short, and that's going to be a turnover on downs. Well, well, he got a good spot, Coach. No, he wasn't close. No, I know, but he gave him a better spot. I don't think he was stopped at the 48, and they gave him the 49. He needed to get almost to the 50. But. Well, needless to say, a very interesting call by the Wellsboro Hornets there. Now what you've just done is you've given a team that you're down a touchdown to already that you have a very hard time stopping. You've given them the ball on your side of the field. It's going to be first and 10 for the Mounties. 2.54 to go in the opening quarter. And a handoff. Casella trying to bounce to the outside, being strung out there and... Might have got back to the line of scrimmage there. 56 again, Coach, right on the tackle. Correct. They've, they've run that play a lot. That's an old wing T play called down where they pull the front side guard. Wellsboro defensed it very well. Their linebackers to the ball 
Campbell on the tackle again. That's his yep. second tackle, I believe, or third. And it's going to be second and ten. They're going to say no gain. 2.26 to go, Coach. In the first quarter, two receivers to the top of your screen. South actually has their tight end over, what we used to call line. They had a tight end to the right along with the slot. They ran it back to the weak side with Casella. What they're looking for there, Paul, is they're looking to see if Wellsboro over shifts to where the tight end and the slot is on the same side of the field. And they ran it back to the weak side. Now, of course, when they run that tonight for the rest of the game, the tight end is ineligible right. because the split end covers him on the line of scrimmage. You drew that on a napkin, Coach, before dinner we were talking plays. I still have it saved here, buddy. It's third down and six here, 146 to go. And play action, Nap rolling to his right. Rolling throws, passes, incomplete as he overshot Harris. Once again, Adams on the coverage. Yeah, and Cade's playing a lot of receiver tonight. Apparently that's where he's going to be for the evening. He ran a play action waggle, and Wellsboro defensed it very well. There was actually nobody open, and Knapp actually threw it where he had to. So fourth down, and we'll see if South wants to I, pin Wellsboro back. No, I, they're going for it. And then they're going to go for it with 140 left in the first quarter. Clock stopped. Fourth down and six. And the ball is at the 45-yard line of the Hornets. Top of your screen is Gephardt. And Knapp rolling out again. Backside screen right there. That's Harris again. Makes the first man miss. Sidesteps and vaults his way to the 40. It's going to be close. Close oh, defending short. on the spot. I think Wellsboro's got it. Yep, they're going to mark it right at the 40, which would be short. Yep. <clears throat> and Caden Harris with his third reception. Great effort by Caden. He vaulted his way. That's yeah, the backside screen at South. Usually waits till later on in the game to throw, but they pulled it out now. and Fairly well defensed by Wellsboro. And I got to tell you, Paul, the Hornets dodged the bullet right yes, there. Yes, they did. As one minute and 30 seconds to go and another turnover on downs. Maybe Coach Hildebrand's figuring, you know, <laughs> hey, we're coming in here one and six. We're going to pull out all the stops. For Wellsboro, it's been all bowling so far. Three receivers set, first down and 10. And Gastrock from the gun, back to pass. Steps up, looks, throws down. He wants Poyer down deep and incomplete, and they're going to get offensive interference. They are, one. as you simply can't can't do what Poyer did, and he just shoved well, South's corner defense. out of the way. <laughs> it was well defense, and, and Dylan Sh Scheller at cornerback, not a normal starter, but he was in there on that particular play on first down, and that's going to hurt Wellsboro again, and they have been their own worst enemy so far in this opening quarter. And he was blanketed pretty well on that. Yeah, there was... That's one you just throw and hope your player runs under it. And what, what actually, Wells, actually, Poyer did a good job making sure Scheller didn't right, intercept right, it. Right, and it's going to be first down now and 25. And 124 to go in the opening quarter. They're going four wide here now. now middle of the field, wide open. And in motion is Adams. Gastrock from the pistol, back to pass. Looks out of the backfield. He hits Bowen. Bowen turns it up, 25-30, and that's all as Caden Harris escorts him out of bounds. About a four-yard gain on the play, Coach. It took a long time to develop him, and, and Gastrock, for a sophomore, is eyeing up exactly where he's throwing the football. He eyed, the, he eyed him up all the way. Caden Harris, veteran, saw that, came up and made the tackle. Wellsboro probably wants to get out of this series as you said, Coach, middle of the field, wide open. Well, they're spreading the field, and, and all those South's corners are taking a little bit of the inside away with leverage. Any kind of a double move, there's nobody left in the middle of right. the field. The question is if, if he would have enough time to throw it. Second down and 22 as Gastrock from the pistol again. Rolling out. Here's the pitch. We saw them running that in practice there, and Adams makes the first one miss, and, but not the second. Now Ben Ferris had his had his sights set in and he also, missed the tackle. Yeah, Connor Apker on the tackle there. Third and 22, and that should be the last play 
of the first quarter. South Sends and outside linebackers did a very good job of staying disciplined against that option. Really nowhere to go with it. And you are right, Paul. Scoreless at the end of the, or not scoreless, 6 nothing. Wellsboro uh, hanging around. Yeah, third down and 24 when we come back with quarter number two, webweeklylive.com, powered by PA Sports Live. Family table away from home is Dolly's Diner, now with three great locations. The original Dolly's Loyal Sock behind Rita's off the Golden Strip. Dolly's Mentorsville, where Dolly met Griggs. And now the new Dolly's Park Avenue, Williamsport, formerly Donna's Restaurant. With those amazing breakfasts, daily and chef specials, sticky buns and more, and Griggs Coffee and Peanuts. Don't miss it. Dolly's Diner, your family table away from home, covering the Williamsport area. The Kaiser Brothers are ready to get you into the perfect new vehicle. Find a Jeep for all your road trip exploits during Jeep Adventure Days. Or take your pick from a full lineup of light and heavy duty Ram trucks during Power Days. No matter what vehicle you're looking for, the Kaiser Brothers on Route 405 in Muncie and Route 11 in Danville, where selection and service equal satisfaction. All right, welcome back here. Sweet Caroline playing over to PA system here and a sweet quarter for the Mounties as they have a 6-0 lead here. Wellsboro, though, hanging around, Coach. Third down and 24. And I know what you're going to say here, Coach. Take care of the ball. You just don't want to turn over. Well, I'm done saying because obviously I'm, I, I'm, I'm dying to sort out to the way the game is, I guess, in 22, but I, 2022. But I do play it safe here. You're down six points. You've got yourself way behind the sticks. Get what you can here and punt the football. Third down in 24. Hornets going from right to left on your screen. Gastrock back to pass, straight drop. Throws a deep out down the sidelines and he had Adams open, but just under threw him as he got between the defenders, coach. Once again, you're seeing that speed from Connor Adams. They just can't hook up. No, they had they had him a one-on-one coverage with Kaiser Kissner, and that's the third time they've thrown that pass tonight and three times they've been unsuccessful and three times it's been wide open. Boy, you're on to punt it away. And South should have very good field position for their first possession of the second quarter. Poyer had a big kick there. And Casella lets it bounce and goes over his head and takes a huge Hornet roll. And it's going to be down to about the 16-yard line. Well, so much for the good field position. A tremendous kick. And then I think... I think if Casella had that to do all over again, he would have tried to field it because there were at least 15, 16 yards that rolled in Wellsboro's favor. So out comes wow. South again. That's over 60 yards, Coach, by my Hazelton math. Yeah, that flips the field. Definitely flips the field. But if Wellsboro can't take advantage of it, it doesn't do any good. Right, 11.45 to go in the half. 6 nothing. South leads. And they're going to come out here now with a three receiver set to the bottom of your screen. And South trying to get some Wellsboro people out of the box, and there's an off tackle play. But Wellsboro's playing straight man. They've still got eight people left in the box, and they've hold, held South on first down here for the most part during the football game to to fairly short gains. Now, Casella broke the first one, and then obviously the long one for a touchdown, but. South's been playing behind the sticks on second down quite a bit tonight. So, Coach, eight people in the box. you got single coverage down there on those three receivers. Would you take a shot down the field? you got single coverage. Would There's I? There's nobody behind you. I probably would try to run some kind of crossing pattern or what they call a pick pattern. Right. Wellsboro's got ten people right there within earshot, and South still picks up four yards. I mean, you can't get any more people in the box. They had everybody lined up in there. I think they had the mascot out there as well. But South had sing or single coverage down here on their lone split end. Another big down for the Mountaineers. Is this going to be third and a long three? And Caselli getting close to 100 yards here in the first half. He's had a, he's had a fine season. Give him 86. That last punt, 
57 yards. And now third and two. Inside they go, and they have it stacked up pretty good, Coach. And, and he, he is going to be no gain on the play. Yeah, they ran right off tackle in a double tight power. I set Wellsboro again, nine to ten men within four yards of the line of scrimmage, and they're going to force South Williamsport to punt. Fourth down, and Wellsboro's D holds again. Ten minutes even, clock moving here before the half. And we'll see if if Wetzel or Adams could make something happen here for Wellsboro and get some decent field position. Sell on the punt of the leg, angles it to the corner and he boomed one. Over the heads of Wetzel and Wetzel fields it at the 35, back drops to the 30. Guys across the 40, out to the 45, spin move again and close to midfield so the Hornets will have great field position. And they have for you know a couple of their possessions but they're just a little off especially on those wheel patterns coming out of the backfield or at the slot to, to Adams. They haven't connected. The gastric one of four for three yards. And 9.34 to go in the half. Once again, coming out three wide, now four wide. And in motion goes... And there's a pitch. That is Adams trying to get him the ball. And they're going to get a face mask They're there. going to get a hold and everything else. I don't know. You think they're going to get a face I, mask? He, he, as soon as his hand went on the face, I, I didn't think he grabbed the face mask, but I think that's where they called it. Okay, we're going to see what happens here, what they call, Paul. There was laundry everywhere. Let's see, Coach. They're calling it. That one's a hold. That's what I thought it was going to be. That's at least the third well, big penalty on Wellsboro tonight. Way back yep. there. Well, it was, he saw it. He had a good good view of it. And the side judge kept his over here. <laughs> so it's going to be first down and. And uh, what seems to be the never ending story for Wellsboro tonight. Behind the sticks again. Way behind the sticks. They can't afford to play this way and expect to win. Merrick Mashko not in the ball game in the slot. Gastric from the pistol. In motion is Mashko rolling out again. Oh boy, he's in trouble there. Tries to turn up the corner and get back to the line of scrimmage there and a little indecision there, coach. Well, quite a bit of indecision. He's looking for a shovel pass. Well, they keep trying first. to run. That's the second time they've tried to run the option, but they're outnumbered because South's in an even defense. So they don't, they don't have enough kids to block. So therefore, whether he pitches or keeps is irrelevant. Second down and 19. This is a big possession here for Wellsboro. They need a first down here. Yeah, South coaches are calling for a shuffle pass. So shovel pass. So apparently Wellsboro's run this earlier in the year. That's what they're expecting. And three wide here. Gastric barks the signals. High snap. And about and again. Bowen. And across the 40 to about the 42. It's one of Wellsboro's better game gains on the ground tonight. Third down, and I'm going to say about 18, Coach. Again, you know, you get yourselves in these situations. There's not a whole lot of plays that you can call that are probably going to be successful. Listen, South's well coached. I'm, I'm telling you, they know, they know tendencies. I know how their coach is coached. They're going to be laying on, on anything that Wellsboro has shown quite a bit during the season. but you come back to Adams here on, on the deep pass? I don't, I don't know, Paul. I really don't. Well, they it's got him in the slot right now. And I think that's going to be a delay of game. Now nah, Wellsboro called a timeout, I believe. Well, we're going to take a break, too. We'll be back to South Williamsport. Hi, Blaze and Lyle here. And with all the luxury SUVs on the market, Lyle doesn't always drive a Grand Cherokee. But when he does choose to drive one, he knows to look on blazealexander.com. With over 20 locations across Pennsylvania and thousands of cars to choose from, BlazeAlexander.com is your one place to shop for both sales and service. So let Lyle help you fetch your next vehicle only at BlazeAlexander.com. We dress up every corner of your home. We have the perfect mattress from the Best Sleep Gallery so your delivery is immediate and free. 
And we have that stylish new appliance with the latest feature and finish. With digital price tags that scan the market to ensure you get the lowest price. Our own installer, service technicians and delivery crews. With live crew tracking so your delivery day is as free as you need it to be. Serving our people. Serving our planet. We are Biter's Furniture, Mattress, and Appliance. Right, welcome back here to South Williamsport. Coach, we got some scores from around the area. What do we you got? We do. We have a couple in. Early returns. Jersey Shore, 20. Montoursville, 0. That's eight minutes into the first quarter. And now Wilkes-Barre, the Wolfpack, up 13-0 on the visiting millionaires. All right, here we got third and 16 from the 42-yard line. And in motion is Adams. Gastrock, a little quick hitter there. That's to Wetzel, and Wetzel sidesteps the first defender and gained about three on the play, so it will be four down. Interesting call to throw that into the boundary and, and, and limit his space, but a fairly safe play, and Wellsboro is going to punt the football once again tonight from their own 43-and-a-half-yard line. Last punt, 58 yards, correct? With 57, the roll? yep. And Poyer's going to kick this one away. Jack has a great leg on him. High snap. Goes up high for that. But he had time. Line drive kick here. Takes a bounce. And this time, Casella picks it up. And he's trying to get to the outside. Stumbled to the corner. And nice tackle before he gets to the outside. And he's brought down. It was 26, coach, or 25. It was Bowen. Right, or Bowen. Bowen. Yep. The fives and sixes are a little bit hard to see him. I think we're going to have a hold or a block in the back that's going to push south back. No pun intended, and it is. And that's not a good start for them as they had great field position, and they're going to be pushed back now. Mount Carmel, seven. South, Southern Columbia, zero. Tigers marching, however, time. Big game tonight down in the coal region. Sure. And it's going to be first down and 10 with 7.15 to go before the half. And South pushed back, back to their 17-yard line. And if you are the Wellsboro Hornets right now, no one-and-done plays. Another Casella off tackle or right, somebody right. for 70, 75 yards. You're down a touchdown in a very competitive game here with 7.15 left. And there's a give right up the gut there. Now, Wellsboro's adjusted. They've got too many. That was Harris. Excuse they do. Me, Coach, sorry. sorry, it's okay. That's Gastrock, quarterback, in to make the play, and he stuck his nose in there. And, you know, Wellsboro's jamming the box, particularly on first down. And don't be surprised if South tries to spread them out in some trips or maybe one back to get some of the Hornets out of the box. Second down and eight, seven minutes, seven seconds to go and a half. Two receivers to the top of your screen. And a handoff up the middle, and Casella stood up right at the line of scrimmage. So once again, third down and long. It is third down and long for South Williamsport. And here's where they usually, you know, when they go to their passing game, it's been waggle, play action. They'll try and get you in a formation where they'll get you one-on-one -on -one coverage to hit a post. We've seen them throw a couple of those. Yeah. But you have 640 and counting. If you're, if you're Wellsboro, you've got to be happy with where you're at right now. Well, that was Caden Harris, the ball carrier. My mistake on the last one. He's in there now again. And a little play action. Nap back to pass. Has time. Throws down the sideline. Wide open is Gebhardt at the 40. And across the 45 and a blown coverage there, well, Coach. Well, it's hard to blow a coverage when you don't have anybody line up on him. So let's take a look at it. I don't know if we're going to be able to see it by the angle, but Gebhardt's all the way out to the left. And... Wellsboro doesn't line up on him. There's nobody out there, so it's very easy to complete that pass. There isn't a Hornet within probably eight or nine yards when that ball was let go. And that's going to be a big first down. And you saw that coming. The secondary was pointing at one another when South came out of the huddle. Trips to the bottom of your screen now. Handoff, Casella right up the middle, down the shoot he goes for four. Right around midfield. And 5.43 to go. Mounties driving here at midfield as they were way back in their own area. And they got that long pass play coach and they'd love to punch one in here before the half. 
One of the things Wellsboro might consider now is getting a timeout, especially if South starts to get a little bit of momentum. Well, they're getting that, but you can see that's, them they're running yep, the ball, running saying. the ball. Because in this game, the way it's gone so far, there's a big difference between being one score and two scores Oh, now. there's a huge difference. Once again, trips to the bottom of your screen. Lone setback is Casella. Under center is Knapp, back to pass, looks, throws, passes, caught again by Gebhardt, and he lunges his way close to a first down coach, and I think he may have I it. I think he has it on this side, but where the official's standing on the other side, they're gonna rule him short, and I think they might call for a measurement. I think he's got it. Landon Gebhardt, a junior, 5'11", 170 pounds, comes into the game, 15 receptions, 251 yards, and three touchdowns. Really good looking athlete. And once again, one or two step drop, the ball's coming out. You're not gonna get to him. Get your hands up and affect the trajectory of the pass. It's too easy. And Gephardt did a nice job of being physical when he caught the ball and getting upfield. I, I may be wrong here, Paul. This may end the streak. I, 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 we see they're moving the ball around all over the place. I thought they had the first down. I did too. And coach, for the game so far, with 4.58 to go in the half, South Williamsport, six first downs, Wellsboro has none. Nope. And for how, I think they've had the ball, what, four times the first half? At least three of those times they've played well behind the sticks. Double, double digit yards needed for a first down on third down. Nap four of eight for 44 yards. Jersey Shore 23, Montoursville nothing now as the Bulldogs. Increase their lead. And they're gonna come all the way over for a measurement, and I believe it is short coach. Yep. By a couple chain links. It was close. We're not gonna hold that one against you. All right. We'll still keep your perfect streak alive. Thanks, my man, I appreciate that. You're like in like old WCW wrestling when Goldberg would wrestle once a week and he was five and oh, then he was 10 and oh, then he was 50 and oh. They just kept pumping the streak up. So we'll say you're undefeated. Thank you. <laughs> you got the Goldberg on I'm you. I'm glad that's acknowledged. I appreciate that. I work hard at trying to figure out whether there's a first down or not. Oh, okay. Third down in inches here. 4.58 to go in the half. Everybody in tight, Coach. Get part bottom of your screen. Yeah, you're not going to see South in a shotgun here. This is one of the things I've never understood about quote, modern football. I sneak it, and there we go, sneak up the middle. And a first down and more, gained about four yards on the play. He did, and he had some ball issues earlier, but South gets off the line of scrimmage. They have a definite size advantage. Yes. Did what they needed to do. Now a fresh set of downs. They've got all three timeouts left. Clock starts again with 440 and counting. If Wellsboro could, could weather this storm, they do get the ball to start the third quarter here, so that that pass play was huge, huge to get that defense off the field. And they've been on the field a long time. Correct. Seven first downs now for South Williamsport. Now we're going to flip the formation. Trips to the top of your screen. Lone setback is Casella. And everybody up in the box again. Back to pass. Down he goes. Big, big sack there. Well, let's take a look at it. One of the things when you run a trip set. Hey, Campbell, coach, not to cut you off again. Sometimes you don't have enough people to block. So you're going to watch Campbell coming right off the edge from his defensive end position unblocked. Coach, he's been in the backfield all night. Yep, here he comes untouched. untouched. And again, lucky that that's not a turnover. 3.48 to go, clock moving here. In the first half, 6-0 South Williamsport leads. And trips to the top of your screen again. Lone setback is Casella. Nap, inside handoff, Casella, and a nice open field tackle there. Absolutely, and if that Bowen, if Bowen, Bowen doesn't. Bowen, I'm sorry. That's all right, if he doesn't make that tackle, that's the play they score on. He's, yeah, off, he's to off to the races, races again. And they're, they're just pulling the front side guard. Wellsboro's defensive end to that side is running upfield and creating a hole. He needs to squeeze that down towards the guard and initiate a collision there, less than the seam. Ryan Casella runs that play well. Ryan Casella, 13 carries, 93 yards, and that 35-yard touchdown. 3.02 to go, clock moving. Knapp taps the center. 
Back to pass, throws over the middle and incomplete intended for Gephardt. And there were a couple of Hornets that were right there. That they were buzzing around the they hive. They were coach. buzzing around the hive, and he's lucky to get that one back. He threw that into essentially triple coverage. Hayes Campbell back in the seam, almost got it. He was the first one. Well, once again, the defense holds, and they're going to get the ball back with 2.50 to go as Poyer and Adams back deep. And Casella to put it away. That's going to go out of bounds. Let's we'll see, see where they mark that. Yeah, that may come way back. The official still got his hand up over to 20, over to the 30. It's going to be about the 30-yard line. As that went off the side of the foot, and good field position for the Hornets. Two minutes and 46 seconds to go before the half. It's almost like Groundhog Day if you're Wellsboro in terms of their starting field position. It's been more than sufficient. They just haven't been able to get anything going offensively. No, they do not have a first down yet. Again, they've had their chances via the air, but either overthrows or drops have hurt them. Let's see where Harris is going to line up here. Your th four receivers set now. Trips to the top of your screen as Gastrock from the pistol. And calls his own number, tries to get around the end, and the speed is just too fast there. South right there. It looked like they opened to the middle, but he bounced it to the outside coach. He did, but Austin Bowersox was unblocked. The South's inside linebackers play good football. They, they tackle fairly well, so there was nowhere to go here. South has all three timeouts. We'll see if they stop him here and use one on the next play. Well, I'll, if Wellsboro does not throw on this down, Okay, I think South will call a timeout, but again, we'll wait and see. Four receivers set again from the pistol. Three receivers, no four, there's four. Top trips to the top of your screen. And Gastra from the pistol. Gonna try it this side. And slipped on that turf, gave out right from underneath him. Again, Wellsboro is trying to run a quarterback play. And South has too many people. And the clock continues to run. Kind of surprised that South isn't calling a timeout here. But they're content to let the clock run. And they just start at the 25 second clock. So if Wellsboro plays their cards right, after they run this play, if they put it on the ground, it's going to be under a minute. Third down and 10. Now trips to the bottom of your screen. And Wellsboro should not snap this until there's about two seconds left. And now we have... And now Wellsboro calls a timeout. 1.16 to go. Let's take a 30-second break. We'll be back. Welcome to another season of Friday Night Lights. Come see us at Park Pizza here in Williamsport, our original location, or inside the Gamble Farm Inn in Jersey Shore. Kaiser Brothers are ready to get you into the perfect new vehicle. Find a Jeep for all your road trip exploits during Jeep Adventure Days. Or take your pick from a full lineup of light and heavy duty Ram trucks during Power Days. No matter what vehicle you're looking for, the Kaiser Brothers on Route 405 in Muncie and Route 11 in Danville, where selection and service equal satisfaction. All right, welcome back here. The Bulldogs, sorry. sorry, Paul, if I may quickly. Sure. The Bulldogs have jumped out to a 30 to nothing lead over Montoursville, and we know that's always been a hotly contested rivalry. We got a diamond formation here at the bottom of your screen, Coach. Yep. We were just talking about that. Correct. Haven't There's seen your... it in a while. There's nope. our diamond. Five wide. Gastrock back to pass, settles in, throws down the sidelines into double coverage, triple coverage, and off the fingertips of Caden Harris. Well, he was there was nobody open. South had that covered quite well. Caden was back there. You know what? It doesn't hurt that Caden dropped it. Wellsboro probably figured it was as good as a punt. But what Wellsboro did there by taking their timeout was stop the clock one, let South Williamsport keep their three timeouts, and now with 111 left. Wellsboro in a punting situation. South's got all of their timeouts and should have some time left 
to maybe punch another one in here before the half. Well, Poyer's been dynamite with his leg. Let's see if South comes after him. Oh, and he just gets that one off. And it bounces at the 40, takes a roll. Florida Hornets it down at the 38-yard line as Poyer was under duress there, Coach. He just got that one off. He was under duress, and then Scheller almost went up and introduced himself to the football, which drives coaches crazy. Jersey Shore now 37. Montoursville nothing. Wow. Still 7 nothing so far that we know of with Mount Carmel. Wilkes-Barre has tacked on another touchdown, and they lead the Millionaires 20 to nothing. Wilkes-Barre, I'll tell you what, I saw them play, Coach, and... They're like Jekyll and Hyde. You they never are, know what you're going to get they're here. up and down. They hammered Berwick, and then they turn around and go on a losing streak. Yep, 6 nothing here, and a big hole up the middle. There goes Caden Harris, and he's going to take it to the end zone. 61 yards, untouched again. Coach, much like the Casella touchdown. Well, we'll watch it again. Watch Wells Burrow's defensive end on the bottom of the screen run right towards South Williamsport's sideline. Take himself out of the play, and it's a simple off-tackle blast. There he goes. He's turned sideways, and once he breaks the initial linebacker zone, there's nobody in the secondary, and here you go. 12 nothing now. Wellsboro find it, finds itself two scores down. South should go for two. And that hurts. Yeah. Even though you're going to get the ball to start the third quarter, Again, we said with this type of game so far, there's a big difference between 12 nothing or 14 nothing down. They're going to go for two. Pass yep. over to Harris. Harris makes one man miss, and he is short of the stripe. And it's 12 nothing there. 61-yard run by Caden Harris. And two long scoring plays really been the difference in this game, Coach. They have. Same off, been, yep, yeah. same off tackle plays. What was mentioned, as we said earlier in the game, what, what Wellsboro cannot have happen has happened to them. They've not been able to muster anything offensively. They've done a fairly decent job defensively of shutting South down. However, those two big chunk plays make you pay when you've got that many men in the box once you break the initial line of scrimmage if the tackle's not made. And we've seen three or four of them tonight, shoestring tackles. Uh, you're going to be in the end zone, especially with South's backs. They've got two or three kids that can take it to the distance, and that's what's happened tonight. Still surprised that Wellsboro used that timeout uh, last possession. Coach, South Williams Sport, 161 yards rushing to 21 for Wellsboro. Oh. Well. Wellsboro has 26 yards of total offense so far in the first half. They've got to make something happen here in the last 53 seconds, but you don't want to make another mistake. And no. like I said, the defense has played well, except well, for those two big plays. Yep. And they have to start to have to start at some point to be showing somewhere. They've been on the field the entire yeah. first half. 32 plays to 17 in favor of South. And that is fielded by 88. Jacob Dean. So at the 45 yard line. Don't say it. One you've time said, out. You've said it. Now go ahead and say it. Wellsboro has fill in the blank. One time out. And good field position again. To start again. Going in that diamond formation again. Trying to have help over the top there. They're going to try to get the ball to Adams here, but there's double coverage there. And Gastrock back to pass. Looking, throws over the middle to Adams, and I think that hit the turf. I don't. I think he caught it. They're going to give him the catch. He did. He caught the ball. It was that. He caught that one, and earlier on dropped the wheel pattern. Nice catch. Now Wellsboro down to one timeout, clock running. Diamond again here. Gastruck from his 31-yard line. Belt high snap, back to pass, under pressure. Rolling out, throws off his back foot, has a man open down there again. And that's Adams again at the nine-yard line and out of bounds, coach. Well, there you go. They don't do anything the entire first half. Now the last two plays, they've picked up 
tremendous amount of yardage. Adams sort of meandered around down there, got himself lost, ended up in a cornered pattern, and Gastrock did a real nice job of buying some time. Absolutely. I was just going to say, he bought himself that extra couple seconds, and Adams is, is, is obviously, the, you can see, he's the quickest receiver to have, and he bought himself some time and got open. Now we've got a timeout now taken by South Williamsport. Wellsboro still has one left. 20. 22 seconds. Ball's at the nine yard line. You got three plays here, Coach. Well, you do, and I'm also, also looking, you know, you don't want the field goal. You obviously, you want, obviously, you want a touchdown, right? Mm -hmm. But if you can get any points at all after the way the first quarter or the first half's gone for you, and you get the ball to start the third quarter, something positive, you take anything. Take and, the points if you can get and, them. And Poyer has a good leg. He's, he's made one field goal of attempt 33 yards Correct. away. So from here... You're looking at about a 28-yarder. Well, you still have, you still have, with that timeout in your pocket, you can still easily run a couple sure. of plays, especially if you roll the quarterback out. Maybe you can throw. even run the ball if you want. Correct. I mean, you got a timeout. Well, their run game hasn't been too sterling so far tonight, but. All right, here we go. We're back. First down and goal. Ball at the nine-yard line. And four wide here for the Hornets. From the pistol. Gastrock, straight drop. Under pressure, flushed out. Still rolling. Ball is, ink throws incomplete. And that should be intentional grounding. There was nobody in the area, and they're going to get him for that. And that's the last thing you want if you're Wellsboro. You get a big penalty, a loss of down. Clock's down to 15.8 seconds. That's going to be intentional grounding. Absolutely. That's a no-brainer. Big pressure by South. Gastrock's the youngster. They just called it offsetting. Offsetting? Yeah, they just called something against South Williamsport. I they believe. did? Right. What did they call? He pointed towards South. Well, maybe if they wanted. I don't know. But I didn't see anything. Well, maybe I am seeing things. <laughs> It has happened to all of us, Paul Bowie. No, I know it. I'll check the tape. <laughs> Three wide to the top of your screen now. 15 seconds to go. Lone setback is Bowen. And Gastrock rolling out to his right. Still rolling. Rolling, rolling. Throws on the run. Passes caught by Adams. And out of bounds he goes. And that's what I, I thought they would do the previous play. To, to get the clock stopped and get yourself some yardage. They still have one timeout left and 10 seconds to go. Problem now is the down, third and, thir third and 14 or third and goal from the 14. You lost that down on the intentional grounding and that hurts. Third and 14, Adams with his third reception, trips to the bottom of your screen. Poyer, top of your screen, double coverage on him. And Gastruck from the gun, rolling out. To his left, rolling, slams on the brakes, and down he goes. Yeah, that's going to be the half. And they got that's, one time out. Yeah, I don't know if they're going to use it or not. They did call it with 1.9 left. Ben Ferris. Ben Ferris is a sophomore, Paul. Check it out. Six foot, 260 pounds. He's been playing some real good football for South Williamsport. Somebody to keep an eye on. He's got two more years left in the program. He's had a nice night tonight. Called his name a couple times. Absolutely, Coach. Now... Four seconds to go. It's a 40-yard field goal from here, from the left hash. Boyer has the leg. We'll see if they attempt it. Well, I, I, I don't know what his, his max distance is, and we didn't get a chance to see whether that 33-yard or just barely made it or made it, and we didn't see them kicking when we caught here earlier tonight. But for me, if, he's, if this is within his distance, kick the field goal, at least attempt it, try and get on the board. South's going to lay back here. They're going to pin their ears back. With under a second left, and you've got to get it in the end zone here if you're not going to kick the field goal. And they're they're going to go for it here. Actually, there's, let's see here. Well, that's for the timeout. Right, 1.9, 1.9. All right, trips to the top of your screen. See if Gastrick hauls one into the end zone, maybe hopes for a penalty. And Gastrick, back to pass, straight drop. Throws to the corner of the end zone, and it is intercepted by Cooley. 
And that's the way to half's going to end, Coach. Yep, and another interception for that young man. He Mashko keeps the was open going. in the corner, but Under he threw get it. Them. Right. Oh, now we're going to have some penalties to end the half. Well, it's going to be on Wellsboro, so the half will be over. Yeah, it's on the quarterback, I think. If they're going to call it on him, he's really hot with his helmet off over on the sideline, pointing and yelling. Did he get hit later? <laughs> oh, we could couldn't see it, so let's see what we got. Personal foul. Oh, he must have gotten hit late, so now that's going to be an extra play. So they're going play. to get an extra play. Well, well now, now it's going to be. Nope, maybe it'll be on the third quarter then to start. I didn't That's. I didn't think you could end the half on, the a, half defensive on a defensive penalty. penalty. Me either, and neither did our counterparts to the right. How you doing, brother? Not All right, much. hey, let's take a break. Let's get out of here. We'll be back. We're still on. Hi, I'm Rennie Rodarmel. I run the Rennie Rodarmel Agency, located at 921 Westminster Drive, Williamsport, Pennsylvania. I think my passion is, is meeting with the uh, customers one-on-one, -on -one, reviewing all their needs, and uh, doing the best job we can to make sure they have the, the best available coverage at the best price. This agency stands out above a lot of them as far as customer service. Our philosophy is not to tell a customer what they need to do. When you want the best, go to the best. Fairfield Auto Group has been giving you the best deals, service, and experience since 1986. Whether you visit their original Ford and Volkswagen store in Montoursville, their second Ford dealership in Williamsport, or their Chevy stores in Lewisburg and Montgomery, you'll be sure to find it at Fairfield. Fairfield for fantastic deals. and Ella Posada is the band ready. Ladies and gentlemen, your Wellsboro Hornets marching band.
family table away from home is Dolly's Diner, now with three great locations. The original Dolly's Loyal Sock behind Rita's off the Golden Strip. Dolly's Mentorsville, where Dolly met Griggs. And now the new Dolly's Park Avenue, Williamsport, formerly Donna's Restaurant. With those amazing breakfasts, daily and chef specials, sticky buns, and more, and Griggs Coffee and Peanuts. Don't miss it. Dolly's Diner, your family table away from home, covering the Williamsport area. Welcome to another season of Friday Night Lights. Come see us at Park Pizza here in Williamsport, our original location, or inside the Gamble Farm Inn in Jersey Shore. When you want the best, go to the best. Fairfield Auto Group has been giving you the best deals, service, and experience since 1986. Whether you visit their original Ford and Volkswagen store in Montoursville, their second Ford dealership in Williamsport, or their Chevy stores in Lewisburg and Montgomery, you'll be sure to find it at Fairfield. Fairfield, for fantastic deals. We dress up every corner of your home. We have the perfect mattress from the Best Sleep Gallery so your delivery is immediate and free. And we have that stylish new appliance with the latest feature and finish with digital price tags that scan the market to ensure you get the lowest price. Our own installer, service technicians, and delivery crews with live crew tracking so your delivery day is as free as you need it to be. Serving our people, serving our planet. We are Biter's Furniture Mattress and Appliance. Riley Casella, the daughter of Nathan and Tammy Casella. Her favorite class is gym. She participates in the National Honor Society Minithon, chair of the Tiny Thon Committee and secretary of the SAD Club. She is also captain of the girls' varsity soccer teams and basketball teams. She plans to attend Penn College in the fall to study in the medical field as well as play soccer. Her escort this evening is South Senior Connor Apter. Connor is the son of David Apter, Miranda Ujua. Ladies and gentlemen, Sophia Casella. <laughs> Introducing Sydney Harris, the daughter of Rod and Christy Harris. Her favorite class is chorus. She is the senior class president. She is also vice president of the chorus. Sydney participates in National Honor Society, Select Choir, and the Renaissance team. After high school, she plans to attend Liberty University to pursue a career as a child life specialist. Her escort this evening is her brother, sophomore Logan Harris. Jackson. Her favorite class is art. She is the number one singles player on the varsity tennis team. She is also a member of the National Honor Society and the Renaissance Club. She plans to attend Liberty University to pursue a career in graphic design. Her escort tonight is South Senior Kate Sanford. Kate is the son of Lane and Carrie Sanford. Ladies and gentlemen, Eve Jackson. favorite class is 3D art. She's a member of the track team and captain of the girls varsity soccer team. She also participates in Kindness Rocks Club, the Renaissance team and chorus. She's also treasurer of the Key Club and secretary of the National Honor Society. Brooklyn plans to attend Penn State to major in art education. Her escort this evening is South Senior Aaron Akers. Aaron is the son of Mark and Shelby Akers. Ladies and gentlemen, Brooklyn Lentz. <laughs> Introducing Piper Rain Minier, the daughter of Michael and Pauline Minier. Her 
favorite class is math. Piper is a member of the girls' varsity soccer team, the basketball team, and the varsity football team. She also participates in Minithon Club, SAG Club, as well as the National Honor Society. Piper plans to attend college to major in nursing, BSN, and to continue to play soccer. Escorting Piper this evening is South Senior Jeffrey Bartholomew, the son of Jeff and Tess Bartholomew. Piper Minier. Mackenzie Rose and Vince Stifer, the daughter of Kayla and Jay Hogg and Britt and Stifer. Her favorite class is science. She's a member of the Minithon Club, SAG Club, Chorus, Yearbook, and the National Honor Society. Mackenzie is also a member of the girls' varsity softball team. She plans to attend Pennsylvania College of Technology to pursue a career as a physical therapist and assistance with pediatrics. Her escort this evening is South Senior Ben Manning, Ben is the son of Scott and Jen Manny, Mackenzie Mitzdeifer. <laughs> Introducing Aaliyah Mary Ripple, the daughter of JT and Aaron Ripple. Her favorite class is chorus. She is a member of the girls varsity soccer team, the girls varsity basketball team, varsity softball and football team. Alia also participates in the National Honor Society, Minithon, and the SAG Club. She plans, plans to attend college next year with a major in special education. Escorting Alia this evening is South Senior Alex Knighty. Alex is the son of Fred and Beth Knighty. Alia Ripple. Introducing Zoe Camille from Friedman. Daughter of Lawson Treaton and Christina Smith. Her favorite class is French. She participates in girls' varsity basketball. Zoe is the treasurer of the National Honor Society, as well as activity information advisor for the SAD Club. She plans to attend Bloomsburg University to study sonography. Her escort this evening is South Junior Brian Casella. Brian is the son of Adam and Beth Casella. Ladies and gentlemen, Zoe Treaton. Last year's homecoming queen, Jaden Bradley, who will be crowning this year's queen. She is the daughter of Matthew and Melissa Bradley. She is currently working on her degree in accounting. Escorting Jaden this evening is Evan Manning. Evan is the son of Adrian Gare. Welcome back, Jaden Bradley. said Jaden will be crowning this year's homecoming queen. And the 2022 homecoming queen is Sydney Harris. <laughs> Congratulations to the entire homecoming court and their escorts. The 2022 homecoming queen, Sydney Harris.
Back statistics with the score, Southland Sport 12, Wellsboro nothing. The Mountaineers have seven first downs, Wellsboro two. In rushing, Southland Sports attempted 21 carries for 162 yards. Wellsboro 12 carries for 12 net yards. In passing, the Mountaineers are five out of 10 for 50 yards. Wellsboro six out of 10. We dress up every corner of your home. We have the perfect mattress from the Best Sleep Gallery so your delivery is immediate and free. And we have that stylish new appliance with the latest feature and finish with digital price tags that scan the market to ensure you get the lowest price. Our own installer, service technicians, and delivery crews with live crew tracking so your delivery day is as free as you need it to be. Serving our people, serving our planet. We are Biter's Furniture Mattress and Appliance. Family table away from home is Dolly's Diner, now with three great locations. The original Dolly's Loyal Sock behind Rita's off the Golden Strip. Dolly's Mentorsville, where Dolly met Griggs. And now the new Dolly's Park Avenue, Williamsport, formerly Donna's Restaurant. For those amazing breakfasts, daily and chef specials, sticky buns and more, and Griggs Coffee and Peanuts. Don't miss it. Dolly's Diner, your family table away from home, covering the Williamsport area. Motors gives you a free lifetime warranty on every new car that you buy. Even after it's yours, we still take care of it like it's one of ours. Ryan, after 11 years, you're still washing my car. For the last 80 years, we've worked hard to serve our community. We've added more and more dealerships to fulfill your needs. Whether you're looking for a new Ford, Mazda, or Chevy, knowing you have a peace of mind with our free lifetime warranty, you're covered forever. With every new vehicle, Murray Motors gives you a free lifetime warranty. That's a real deal want the best go to the best fairfield auto group has been giving you the best deals service and experience since 1986 whether you visit their original ford and volkswagen store in montoursville their second ford dealership in williamsport or their chevy stores in lewisburg and montgomery you'll be sure to find it at fairfield fairfield for fantastic deals Hi, I'm Rennie Rodarmel. I run the Rennie Rodarmel Agency located at 921 Westminster Drive, Williamsport, Pennsylvania. I think my passion is, is meeting with the uh, customers one-on-one, -on -one, reviewing all their needs and uh, doing the best job we can to make sure they have the, the best available coverage at the best price. This agency stands out above a lot of them as far as customer service. Our philosophy is not to tell a customer what they need to do. We need to know what they want us to do for them and take care of them. King, come in. is the best drink you can drink. It is the best drink you can drink. King, come in. is the best drink you can drink. It is the best drink you can drink. King, come Oh man, great energy, King Kong energy drink, the best drink you can drink, drink boys. If the you want the energy, drink. King Kong energy King drink is the Kong one you're going to have to choose. It's the best drink you can drink. It is the best drink you can drink. King Kong it with Big Snoop Deal Double G. King Kong it with the best family just got a whole order of King Kong in like five or six cases. My mom loves it, my dad loves it, the whole family, all ages. King Kong and energy drink keeps you going all day. Welcome to another season of Friday Night Lights. Come see us at Park Pizza here in Williamsport, our original location, or inside the Gamble Farm Inn in Jersey Shore. Welcome back here to South Williamsburg. Coach, we are at the half. Great to see the kids out there for homecoming and extended half. And South Williamsport 12 to nothing leading here against Wellsboro. Wellsboro drove right as we closed the half, but they couldn't get any closer. And now that penalty is going to be assessed at the end of the half. will be assessed on the kickoff here. So once again, the Hornets should have great field position. They should. And, and as Poyer is at his own 40-yard line. A weird first half. 
Very strange. Needless to say. So if you're Wellsboro, as you said, probably for the 18th time, it seems like tonight, should have good field position. Chase Beck's going to kick this one off. When our kickoffs have been short tonight as the regular kickers for the Mountaineers were part of homecoming. Left-footed kicker here. And it's fielded right at midfield is Wetzel, and Wetzel is down at the 46-yard line. Four-yard return, and that's where Wellsboro will take over and start the third quarter. And they caught fire right near the end of the half. And again, I don't know how, how vanilla South Williamsport was playing defensively, but they hit two big passes, were well within scoring range, and then familiar miscues, which is Wellsboro's um, downfall the first half, came back to bite them, and they ended up not being able to get a throw into the end zone. They're going to start off here four wide here, Gastrock from the shotgun. And right up the middle, calls his own number and runs into his own player and then a host of Mounties. No, South Williamsport, the inside linebackers, Bower Sox and Casella were all over that. They met Wellsboro's pulling lineman in the hole. Well played by South Williamsport. And Wellsboro's going to find itself in a familiar place. Behind the sticks again, Coach. That Second is correct. down and 12. And the ball is just across midfield at the Mountie 49-yard line. Coming out, trips to the top of your screen. Bottom of your screen is Poyer. And Gastrock again now from the pistol. And back to pass throws. Passes. Ew, almost picked off as Mashko was not even turned around. And I think that hit Caden Harris in the back. It did. Wellsboro took their two. Cooley, I'm sorry. Wellsboro took their two outside receivers and ran them down on slants. Tried to get Matchko out into the flat, but he didn't even look for the ball. And Wellsboro's lucky that was an intercepted and going the other way. Either the ball was early or Matchko looked too late. Third down and 12 trips to the top of your screen. And we got Poyer here to the near boundary. And Gastruck back to pass. Looking throws passes behind a sliding Wetzel. Well, Wetzel was was either hooking up and continued to hook up, and they were not on the same page as Gastrock threw it behind them, but it appeared to me as they were trying to get into the soft spot of South's three-deep zone. And he, he had an area, but they were not on the same page. Yeah, if he could have led them a little bit there in three plays and a negative two yards and Poyer on to punt it away with 11.05 to go here in the third quarter. Poyer's going to angle another high kick. Backtracking is Harris at the 10-yard line. Fair catch called for and made. And that's where... We have another flag down. Hold up. Way back. We'll see what the officials have got. Appears to be a hold. So we'll see if they're going to make him kick it again or not. They're talking to Coach Eisworth on the sideline. So it was a hold against the Hornets. We'll see if they're going to mark that off. And they are going to step 10 yards for South Williamsport, who will be taking over. Right around the 21, Coach. That is correct. Big series here for that Wellsboro defense. First down and 10. One receiver, nap under center. And uh, there's the big play that they had, and Harris pulled down there. Went down pretty quick there. He, he did. He, he started in the C-gap, the D-gap, and then tried to take it outside. And I'm really surprised they didn't get south for a hole there on Connor Apker. It looked like he had two hands on Wellsboro's defensive end, Hayes Campbell. And that was almost identical, Coach, to that long touchdown run. Correct. 
Well, there's been four or five of those plays where the tackle, if it wasn't made, it was going to be a very long run for South Williamsport and or a touchdown. Schiller now top of your screen, trips to the top, and a single setback is Casella, and Casella gets the ball right through He's the gone. middle, and there he goes again. Well, going to be tough not. to catch him. Wetzel's trying to run him down. Behind the 30, 20, 15, 10, down at the six-yard line as Wetzel runs him down. Well, again, we're going to take a look at it. When you commit as many people in the box as Wellsboro has, once you break the initial line of scrimmage right there, there's nobody left in the secondary, and now it becomes a foot race. And Wellsboro is able to run Casella down just outside the five-yard line. So, again, we see one or two plays, big chunk yardage, South getting. This Wellsboro has shown no signs of life offensively. No, not at all. Trips to the top again. Casella lone setback. Nap under center. And off Casella right through the middle, barreling his way, reaching for that stripe, and he's a little short. Nice surge by the Mountaineer offensive line. They're going to mark him at the two. Harris and Cassell in the backfield. Knapp calls his own number up the middle, and he is going to be no sign yet, Coach. He's, He's in for in. the touchdown. Yep. Two-yard run. And now we'll see if South chases those two points, or I think they will because their regular kickers are out. Unless there's a tremendous turn of events here, Wellsboro's had all kinds of issues offensively. Yeah, they've had a lot of problems offensively and a touchdown there early here in the third quarter makes it really, really tough to catch them. And they're going to go for two. And that rolling out, rolling out, throwing, pass is caught for the conversion and it is good. I believe it's Casella. He's done just about everything tonight, Coach. Yeah, very impressed with him as an overall football player on both sides of the ball. Runs with great physical prowess. He's got a nose for the football defensively. Coach, get this. Ryan Casella, 15 carries, 168 yards, and a touchdown. Well, for some people, that's half a season. You know, and he hung 100 on Muncie last week as well, so. He's getting hot at the right time. Yep. Hey, let's take a quick 30-second break, and we'll be back. Your family table away from home is Dolly's Diner, now with three great locations. The original Dolly's Loyal Sock behind Rita's off the Golden Strip. Dolly's Mentorsville, where Dolly met Griggs. And now the new Dolly's Park Avenue, Williamsport, formerly Donna's Restaurant. For those amazing breakfasts, daily and chef specials, sticky buns, and more, and Griggs Coffee and Peanuts. Don't miss it. Dolly's Diner, your family table away from home, covering the Williamsport area. All right, welcome back here. 20 to nothing here, South Williamsport leads. Jace Beck and Atitas went off again. And we have an updated score, Paul. wilkes Bear 27, Williamsport nothing in the third. And that's fielded by Poyer. And he's up to about the 43-yard line. Paul. And <laughs> Wetzel returned that one. Excuse me, I got the wrong guy there. Can I say it? Nah, we're not going to say that. All right. First and 10 for the Hornets on their own 43. Ball on the right hash. 8.49 to go in the third quarter. Trailing 20 to nothing for the homestanding South Williamsport Mountaineers. And good field position once more, Coach. You said you weren't going to say it. Uh, we're going to call out the obvious here. Gastrick. Three receivers set. And a handoff up the middle. That's bowing up the middle. Wellsboro's best run of the night. Nine yards for Bowen right off tackle. Yeah, but Bowen runs hard. I mean, he runs hard. He just hasn't anywhere to go. 
And I know I said earlier, hey, 20 to nothing, still the third quarter, still plenty of time left. But Wellsboro's going to have to have to get something going here offensively without stating the obvious. Yeah, defensive, they've given up 240 yards rushing so far in a little bit over a half. And handoff again. Bowen again. First down, and they're going to give him it this time. That can't be too many for Wellsboro tonight. How many is that, Paul, with the updated stats? Say two or three, maybe. I believe that's their third. Okay. Because they got two right near the end of the half with those right, two yep. pass plays, and that's been hit. So Wellsboro may be showing signs of life offensively with the ball on south side of the field. Yeah, at the 48-yard line. In motion is Adams. And enough again, Bowen trying to get to the outside. Um, and Connor Apker will have Apker. none of it. 6'4", 240-pound senior swallowed him up, played that well, kept his leverage. And ball at the 49-yard line. That's going to be a loss, and once again, the Hornets behind the sticks. And we have a final from Kenneth Robin Stadium. Loyal Sock 47. While losing, nothing, and that game was called early. Wow. Apparently, while losing, it had enough. So an early out for the Rams. Sock with a huge game against Troy next week at Troy. In motion is Adams. Fakes the jet sweep and ball on the turf, and South got it again. They do, and that's going to be recovered by... Apker, I, I think believe. it was Connor Apker yep. again who had himself a fine defensive series. Hey, he was in the homecoming court and now gets himself a turnover. Absolutely. It's a great Friday night for that young man. And now South with the ball on Wellsboro side of the field to start their second possession of the half. 6.46 left to go here at Rodney K. Morgans with a 20 to nothing lead over the Green Hornets of Wellsboro. South just wearing down this defense here who's been on the field a long time. Yeah, don't be surprised if South takes a shot here. They've got man coverage. Knapp rolling out to the right. Rolls, throws, passes. I, incomplete. Is yeah, Hayes Campbell Scheller. again. Yep, sorry, Paul. Hayes Campbell put all kinds of pressure on Knapp. Didn't allow him to set up the throw of the pass. Second down and 10. With a third quarter score, Useville seven. The Tawanda Black Knights zero. Nap now five of 12 for 51 yards on the ball game. And two receivers to the top of your screen. And there's a fumble, but he picks it right up and hand off to Caden Harris. Bearing his way and barreling his way for a first down. Down to the 35. Boy, Caden Harris hit the hole with great speed. Nice vision. Sidestepped a little bit. Got himself north and south. And the Mountaineers are going to move the sticks. That's the first one I got right, Coach, all year. On a close one there. First down. Doing well, Paul. First down and 10. And ball at the 35-yard line. 6.14 to go. Clock moving third quarter. South Williamsport on top. 20 to nothing. There's that eye, and Casella, who dotted the eye up the middle. Hayes Campbell again dragging by the jersey. There was a hole there initially for Casella. <laughs> Hayes Campbell's had himself a nice night for Wellsboro defensively. Second down and seven, 5.33 to go. Two receivers, top of your screen, backs in an eye again. Casella up the middle again, barreling his way, still pumping those pistons, turned sideways and down to about the 20. And Ryan Casella running hard, coach, closing in on 200 yards rushing. Yeah, this is an inside fullback trap if we get a chance to look at it again. You're going to see the guard pull and trap, short trap, and Casella runs right up the pipe with it. Souths run this play for years. They run it well. It's a first down for the Mountaineers. They continue 
to march the football towards pay dirt with five and counting in the third, Paul Bow. This time Harris, the tail back and a handoff to Caden. Caden makes the first man miss and vaults his way inside the 15 yard line and the Mounties picking up yards and chunks, coach. Yeah, I like the way he runs. He's hobbling just a little bit coming off, but he's had a nice offensive series with a couple of good carries. He shows good vision and good body lean. Gets to the hole in a hurry and falls forward. Not seen Kemar at all, coach. No, nope. Kemmer on the side of Kemmer, yep. I'm sorry. Amir Kemmer has not been, I don't believe he's had a carry tonight. No, and he's dressed. He's on the sideline there. Here's a pitch running wild. Casella running wide, turns it up, flags fly, and in the area of holding. I would be surprised if it was anything. I didn't see any hands to the face or any face mask. So for one of the few times tonight, South is going to hurt itself and put itself in a long yardage situation. Wellsboro's done it to him a couple of times via the sack. But South's done a fairly decent job tonight with their penalties. You know, Caden Harris, six carries, 85 yards, and that touchdown, we were talking so much about Casella, but this whole South Williamsport team really running the ball. 29 carries now, Coach, 271 yards. Correct. And that's, hey, it's what they do best. Once again, Harris running to the left side, cuts it back, puts his head down, and leaps down to about inside the 20. And right now, South is having its way up front against a much smaller Wellsboro defensive line. Who's played they, very well. They have. They're tired, though, Paul, even on sure. the field. Uh, almost the entire third quarter, I believe three plays, if I'm correct, for Wellsboro. Or four plays, maybe. Yeah, they got a, they first, got a first down or so, five tops. So they've been on the field all night, and South is relentless in their ground game. Nap. Rolling to the right, rolling, rolling, throws, passes, almost intercepted by Poyer as he swats it away. He did. He had leverage on him. He waited a little bit too long to throw the ball. If you're going to throw that pass, you want to throw it outside shoulder so where your receiver gets it or nobody because if Poyer catches that one, there's nothing but green grass ahead of him. I think South's going to call one of their timeouts here as they are faced with the fourth and nine. Well, let's take a quick break, Coach. We'll be back. Fast Mass, Speed Agility, and Quickness Camp. This is where we get it done. Improving everybody's quick turnover, everybody's agility, everybody in transition with sprints. All ages, all sports. You want it, we got it. Come to Fast Mass. Welcome back here, Coach. 20 nothing, 3.15 to go. Yeah, before South comes out, we have a score from down at Catawissa. Mount Carmel 14 and Southern 14, yet they're still deadlocked as they're battling into the, what will probably be late into the third quarter. Yeah, and, and Mount Carmel, I believe, was up 14 nothing in that game. Southern coming back. Heart of a champion. Welcome back. It's four and hand play action. Nap throws, looks for Harris, and Harris never turned around there. Good uh, they, defense by Poyer. Not see there, I don't see any flags down there. No. And South ran a crossing pattern with their slot and split in, and the ball was not delivered on time. Plus, Wellsboro had it defended. Yeah, Poyer gave himself some room, and he, and he forced him to the boundary. And Good defense on that. Never given up. 20 nothing here. 3-10 to go in the third quarter. And Wellsboro with three first downs. And we have a score, Danville 35, Berwick nothing. Wow. As the Ironmen flex their muscles. Four wide there. Gastrick again looking to pitch, and he does. 
Bowen, and he is out, and he's bumped out hard. And we're going to get a flag. They're going to get a flag there, but in his defense, he couldn't stop there. Cassell was coming like a freight train. I think he just laid the – I'm sorry, that wasn't Cassell. I'm trying to see who number that was, Coach. Might have been 18. Yeah, but it was somebody from the secondary. Yeah, he really laid the wood there. It may have even been Scheller, 88. 88, yeah, I saw the 8. But you know what? He, he really couldn't stop himself there as he was so close there. And well, it's tight quarters, yeah. as you know, at, at yeah. Rodney K. Morgan's. There isn't much space, so everything gets amplified even worse when there's a hit on the sidelines. Sure. And there, he gave the referee no choice there. He had to call that. Yeah, and that was totally unintentional. Oh, it was nothing malicious, but it was no. late. Yeah, it happens. Four wide here now from the pistol. Goes Gastrock. Little quick hitter again. We saw that earlier and straight up the field goes Wetzel for a first down. Nice pitch and catch, first down. Yeah, they've thrown that twice tonight and twice to the right and twice into the boundary. This time, a much bigger gain for the Hornets. And you know, I keep saying, Coach, Wells Pearl's receivers are very, very quick. You don't haven't seen anything to the wide side of the field to give them some space. Oh, they've thrown quite a bit into the boundary tonight. Right. Four to wide right. again. First down and 10, 2.56 to go. Gastrick now coming this side over to Poyer. Tries to make Harris miss, but he does not. And right at midfield, Caden with a nice stick. A nice open field tackle by Caden Harris, but a gain of five yards on first down for Wellsboro. Good play calling now as they're starting to mix up a little bit and take what South's giving them as South's outside backers and corners are playing off, and rightfully so with a 20-0 lead. Wellsboro's going to have to get one in the end zone by the end of the quarter, I think, if, yeah, if, absolutely. They're, gonna make it, no, if they're going to make a run at South. Because and keep that defense off the field for correct. a while. Four wide again. Now from the shotgun. Ball into his right, left. And two minutes and 10 seconds to go, and Gastrock behind Bowen. Once again, nothing doing in the heart of that defense and slung down there by Apker. Correct, well it's Apker, it's it's the entire defensive line to that side, the inside linebacker. Again, you know. They're gonna South, give some progress, game two yards. Yeah, well South isn't exactly small, 235, 260, 240 up front. Wellsboro can't, just simply can't match that poundage wise. No, no. And it's showing, now normally, you know, what you want to do, I see what Wellsboro's trying to do schematically. They're trying to spread South out and get some creases and run, but South just too physical. Four right again now from the pistol. Third down and four for Gastrock. Gastrock, another quick hitter. This time, that is Wetzel again. First down and more. Stiff arms a man and ducks out of dodge at the 36. That's been their best run play, even though it's a pass. Yep, that's third catch on the night for Spencer Wetzel. Correct. Two into the boundary now, one over here. 17 on the year for him coming in tonight. I'll tell you who's been very quiet tonight has been Connor Adams. Has he been, has he been back? At, yep, he's back on the field, but we haven't called his name a whole lot tonight. No, he, he dropped had those a couple two, passes early. He had those two long catches. And Wetzel now three catches, leads the team 23 yards. Let's take a timeout here. we got a minute break, 60 seconds. We'll be back. When you want the best, go to the best. Fairfield Auto Group has been giving you the best deals, service, and experience since 1986. Whether you visit their original Ford and Volkswagen store in Montoursville, their second Ford dealership in Williamsport, or their Chevy stores in Lewisburg and Montgomery, you'll be sure to find it at Fairfield. Fairfield, for fantastic deals. When you want the best, go to the best. Get you some, Amazon. I got mine, get yours. Welcome back here. 105 to go in the third quarter. 20 to nothing south leads. But the Hornets are driving. It's going to be first down. Little shimmy shake there. Passes caught and bobbled and caught again. And that was Wetzel again. 
Yeah, it hit him in the seam, and he had to stop because he didn't know whether he caught it or not, and hence South's defense was able to rally and keep that from being a much bigger play. Four catches, 33 yards for Spencer. We're under a minute to go in the third quarter with the Hornets driving. They're coming out in this four wide, spreading the field in the pistol and giving Gastrock the whole field to look over. Another quick hitter again. And that is Wetzel again, I believe, Coach. Greg, I think that's that's Poyer, I believe, was number f- No, is it Wetzel, that, number that, five? That's Poyer, yeah. I thought it was Poyer. He has but, the two armbands on. And listen, there's another nine-and-a-half-yard gain. And South Williamsport, I think, you know, willingly giving this up a little bit as time's running down. Wellsboro may get this play off to end the third quarter. Second catch on the night for Poyer. And we're under five seconds to go. And Gastruck again. They almost jumped that one there. And there's a flag there. That's going to be a late. Well, it's either going to be a face mask. I think it's a face mask. It's a late call. South. And oh. Wellsboro's going to start the fourth quarter in fantastic shape offensively as they've gone down the field throwing. Oh, that's the, knock. the quarter's not going to be over yet on a defensive penalty, I don't believe. I think that's, they've got to jog all the way back down the other end now, I think. I could be wrong again. Well, the officials still haven't made the call here. Let's see what we got. It's going to be a face mask. I'm going to put, I'm going to bet, I'm going to bet my car on it. Lucked out. I'd be driving that Lexus. Hey, I don't own that. And now they're going to run the clock. <laughs> And I'm just laughing because Wellsboro's going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Now they've settled that they're going to run one more play here. Untimed. Untimed down. Listen, we said Wellsboro needs to get one in before the fourth now quarter. They got five yards, but I'll tell you what, they keep going those quick hitters. Well, South is right up on them. They're going to jump that route. Well, it's, the quick hitters are hard now because well, they yeah. don't have much field. Gastrick from the gun, and cuts it up inside the five, and he's down to about the two. Yeah, a little bit of a quarterback delay or draw, if you will. Took a second or two, let the blocking develop, and then was able to read, and Wellsboro's been able to move the ball, albeit with the same play, but if it keeps working, keep running it, and it's the end of three. 99 yards the other way we go. We'll be back. Fast Mass Speed Agility and Quickness Camp. This is where we get it done. Improving everybody's quick turnover, everybody's agility, everybody in transition with sprints. All ages, all sports. You want it, we got it. Come to Fast Mass. Another season of Friday Night Lights. Come see us at Park Pizza here in Williamsport, our original location, or inside the Gamble Farm Inn in Jersey Shore. Three quarters in the books, and one more to go here from South Williamsport and Wellsboro at the one-yard line. Coach, you can't get much closer than that. And Twelve minutes to go here. Uh, they've and they've really stretched south on this drive with hitting their short patterns, but they're going five wide here now. What are you doing here, Coach? Quarterback well, draw? Well, there's only one person that can run it from this formation. And there he goes, and he's not going to get in there. As uh, He may have lost a little bit. South knows that. When you have no back in the backfield except the quarterback, again, when you go five wide on the goal line, you limit yourself because South doesn't have a whole bunch of territory to defend. They've got right. the goal line behind them. they got 10 yards behind them. That's it. Anything over their head is going to be out of the end zone. So now we've got a third and goal. For Wellsboro, and and now in the fourth quarter, every tick of the clock is in South's favor. When you've got a three touchdown score, Wellsboro needs to 
put one in the end zone here, obviously, but maybe speed up a bit. Third down ball at the two yard line, third and goal. Gastruck again from the pistol. Back to pass, looks, little jump pass in the end zone and. Yeah, uh, broken up. South was all over it. Cooley was all over the pass. That was shades of Brett Favre there with that jump yeah. pass. So now, Wellsboro's got a fourth and goal. They actually lost a little bit of yardage. It looks like they're at the one yard line, one and a half call it. But yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't understand why teams aren't under center more, especially in such short yardage situations. Yeah, fourth down. Gastric from the pistol and well, nice fake there. Trying to, they got him and he stopped short as no, nope, he was brought down by Landon. Yep, Gephardt Gephardt stayed home. He did. He did a nice job reading his keys. Wellsboro drives that whole way to get nothing. South Williamsport, nice job defensively, is going to take over. Wilkes Bear 40 to 7 over Williamsport. Mount Carmel has retaken the lead on Southern, 20 to 14. So we get a couple scores in before South runs another play. I'm gonna come out with the Kinner can sell up the middle, spinning, corkscrewing his way out to about the 16, and that's a 15-yard gain for Ryan. Yeah, and you're starting to see uh, some cracks in the Hornet defense as they've been on the field the entire evening. I don't know if I don't know if you'll see South throw another pass. 18 carries, 195 yards for Ryan Casella. And off Casella again, jump cuts his way out to about the 25 yard line. He almost broke that one. Spencer Wetzel came up and made the Another sort of shoestring tackle. 10 South. minutes, 20 seconds, I'm sorry, That's coach. all right, and South is just chunking plays now. Eight, seven, eight. As the clock continues to run in their favor, we're gonna be under under 10 by the time snap, South snaps the next play. And there's a pitch, Harris getting to the outside. Stops on a dime and that turf just gave way again, coach. It did, he wanted to plant his foot and cut back. He may have had a little bit of a seam, but the turf at RKM would not allow it. And down he goes. We've seen a couple people slip it all, but it hasn't been too bad. Well, you did not on our pregame. Your footing was stellar. <laughs> That's why I got the sneaks on. I got the air bows. 9.31 to go, clock moving here. And off Casella again, first down. Yeah, bread and butter straight ahead, power football. As South continues to impose their will on the Hornets defense. Oh boy, you, you have to respect the way Ryan Casella runs the football. And he's back. He's only a junior, six foot two ten. Yeah, he's a big back. And off Harris. And Harris, again, vaults his way up to about the 35 and 34 yards so far in this drive at South. And they'll take that all night long and just milk that clock as we are down to eight minutes and 40 seconds to go in the ball game. Clock moving. It is, and if we're using, if we're using our vocabulary tonight, methodical would be the word I would use to describe this drive for the Mountaineers. Uh, really, there's, there's, there's nothing worse for a defense than a team that, that is rushing the ball right at you and you don't seem to have an answer for it. It's very demoralizing. Pitch, Harris running to the left side, cuts it back, and Wetzel goes for a ride and he rides him down about the 45 yard line. Again, and there's one, two, three Green Hornets getting up off the ground. And once again, Caden Harris hits that hole and falls forward 
with another physical run for South Williamsport. Here goes Casella again up the middle. And we've got a little bit of extra curricular activity, and that's a good deal to walk away from it. Yeah, you got to walk away. Well, nobody needs a stupid penalty here to get thrown out. And that's Lucas Long, who needs to calm down out there. I think South's going to do the right thing, get him off the field. They're going to need him to play. You've got to keep your emotions under control. Paul, when was the last rush the South had negative yardage on? It's been a while, I believe. Everything's been positive tonight. Some chunk yards. They've held the ball on this drive for quite a long time as we're going to be under six and a half. The third and one. South kept it the ball for about a week. Yeah, third down now and one, 625. Clock moving. And once again, Harris in the back and a hand off to Casella again. Casella again, like a bulldozer. Paul, the way this drive's going, Wellsboro may not get the ball back. South may run the clock out. Yeah, First attempt for South. 5.43 to go, and a handoff. Caden Harris over to the right side, tries to get to the outside, and hanging on for dear life. You know, Gastrock came up and made a nice Gastrock tackle. there, because that coach had the looks of another long touchdown yeah, run. Correct. Once he would have been able to get outside of Gastrock, he had clear sailing down the sideline, which is gonna bring up a second down and 11, and a negative, uh, a negative play for South, their first one in a long time. When you talk about ball control and keeping the ball for a long time, this is textbook for the Mountaineers. Second down and 11, five minutes to go in a long, long drive here, and play action. Nap rolling, throws, passes, caught. Gephardt had it on the Gephardt. comeback. And that's going to be close to another first down. Tell you what, Radley now playing a really nice game, managing the game nice tonight. Correct. He's, he's, he's for a youngster, he plays smart. He hasn't thrown two, I think maybe a couple passes tonight he'd like to have back. But South's coaches also do a nice job of putting him in good positions and not asking him to make a ton of plays. Now, as he matures, I think you'll see that change because he's certainly got some size and some talent. Yeah, we got him 7 of 14 for 59 yards. And here comes Harris trying to get to the corner, and he does. 30, 20, 15, yeah, cuts back, back, and there's going to be another hold on the play. Yeah, it's either blocking the back or a hold, and that's a shame because Caden Harris, we're going to take a look at it, Cam. Watch how Caden sort of slows down here a little bit, Paul, after he gets the toss, sets up the blocking, and then accelerates right here. Settles down slow, 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 slow. Now goes right through the seam, and that's a shame that it's going to be brought back by a hold. A fine run by Caden. Well, as you've watched, this young man over the years has certainly matured and escalated to having a fine senior season for South Williamsport. Pretty good basketball player too, Coach. Same. So it's going to be third and about long six, I would say, for the Mountaineers. And we're in, inside four minutes here.
Three receivers to the top and Knapp rolling out again and here's that back screen again. Dapker and nothing doing there again as that's the second time that was well diagnosed. Correct. And Wyatt Gastrock was in there, the brother of the quarterback to make the play, senior for the Hornets. So they've defended that play well tonight. I believe that's at least the second time. Yes. Second time for sure South's run it. They haven't had too much success with it tonight. Wellsboro's done a nice job of defensing it. And South is going to punt. We've got some bees buzzing onto the field on and off a little bit of confusion. And coach, also that last carry before the penalty, Harris over 100 yards. That's 113 for him on the ground. As a team, South Williams for 41 rushes for 337 yards. Now you're not gonna lose too many games with those type of stats. And I'll tell you, the way they played last week against Muncie, and again, putting the rush game together tonight, you know, South's probably gonna come in second or third in the district. So they've certainly got the playoffs on their mind as they have Useville next week right here at Rodney K. Morgans, and then they will travel to Northwest, which will certainly have playoff implications the last week of the season. Gastrock gets the snap. Back to pass, looks, throws down the sidelines, and oh, almost off the deflection as Adams almost got it. Good defense again, and I'll, I'll tell you what, Coach, I, I, I just, Adams is so quick. They just, I, you would think they would try to get the ball to him in space. They're throwing so deep to him. Well, Kaiser Kistner did a nice job oh, of tipping defense. that ball. However, he tipped it up, and listen, it hasn't been, it's been a frustrating night for Adams tonight, but I hear you. Four wide here now from the pistol, 258 to go, Gastrock. Lone setback is Bowen. And back to pass he looks. Out of the backfield, pass to Bowen. Slams on the brakes, cuts it back, and a big hit there. That was like a collision of an 18-wheeler, Coach. That was a nice hit by Ben Ferris, who came wild. Wow. Down. We've mentioned his name two or three times tonight. But, again, yeah, earlier he tried to put the brakes on, and it looked like an NHL game. I thought we were at the garden with the Rangers trying to get a shot on the power play that, this time of the night with the way the weather's been the last couple of days. Trust me from experience on this field, it's slick out there. Third down and nine now, as they're going trips to the bottom of your screen, four wide, 2.17 to go. And Gastrick back to pass. Looking, has a man open, that is Wetzel up at the 30 yard line. And that'll be close to a first down. I think he's a little short, Coach. He is going to be about a yard short. Again, what we used to call a spot play where you just run to a spot and turn around. Did a nice job finding the zone, hole in the zone. And if you're Wellsboro now, obviously, you've got to go for this. Wetzel, a senior, 5'10", 160 pounds, or the second leading receiver on this team. A lot of receptions here. Like we said, Joe Brown out with the MCL, 19 catches for the year. Wetzel and Poyer both have 17. And it's now fourth down and one with a buck 35 to go. And Wellsboro trying to keep the drive alive. And there's a pass that is complete. North and south he goes for a first down. And that's been Wellsboro's best pass play tonight. Yep. Wetzel again. It was their previous possession. They went right down the field with it only to come up empty. And then south kept the ball, which, which seemed like for the entire third quarter, or the entire fourth quarter, excuse me, as we're gonna be down to about a minute left when the Hornets snapped the ball with the first and 10. Coach, give Wetzel seven receptions, 57 yards, as we are under a minute. Once again, four wide. This formation's been very successful. Pass again is complete to Wetzel. And, and another six yard gain. Yeah, and South more than willing to give those passes up as they're not gonna they're just gonna pad the statistics for Wellsboro, but they're not gonna harm the outcome of the game. We're down under 40 seconds. Started the fourth quarter. It is Mount Carmel area 28, Southern 21 in Catawissa. It is Wilkes-Barre 46, Williamsport seven. That one really shocks me. Millionaires played so well last week and just ran into a buzzsaw up in Wilkes-Barre at that new stadium. 
20 seconds to go, four wide again. Gastruck from the gun, back to pass. Looking, under pressure, throws, passes, caught again. That is Wetzel again, his ninth of the game, and out of bounds he goes. Good game for Spencer. Yep, he's had a, he's had a nice evening. He's been targeted quite a bit. First attempt for the Hornets, but a little bit too little and a little bit too late. I believe a Pat Benatar song, Paul Bo. It's a little too little, it's a little too late. As the Hornets are going to drop to one and seven. And where are they next week, Coach? They are at Bald Eagle area, and then we'll finish the season Very home. nice facility there. Yep, we were there last year they to cover very, the short game. Yep, they were very accommodating. This trips to the top of your screen. This will probably be the last play, barring a penalty. And Gastrick back to pass, straight drop, three steps. Steps up, throws over the middle, and that is picked off by Casella. Who else? To to put a bow on it, Coach, no pun intended. No. Nope. Three seconds to go, and Ryan Casella just adding to his totals. He's another one. What a game he had. Over 200 yards rushing, a touchdown. He's in the homecoming court, and now an interception to cap this one off. South Surly had a nice effort second half, particularly with their offensive line and the way they've been able to dominate. Yeah, and, and, and Coach, we said this in our pregame here. If South could run the ball against anyone, putting up 300 yards rushing, it's tough to beat you. Absolutely. And Nap will take a knee. Good show of sportsmanship by both teams. And South wins. And the final is 20-0. They pitch a shutout here. And, you know, this game was much closer than the score, but Wellsboro... I mean, they hung tough in their defense, Coach, on the field an awful, awful long time. It was. They had a couple shots early with running backs going down to sidelines and just couldn't connect. Then hurt themselves a little bit with penalties. But listen, you've got to credit South Williamsport because Wellsboro had eight in the box the entire night, and South still found a way to rush the football for over 300 yards. So well, at some point, you've got to give the offensive line credit. South's backs ran extremely hard, and they're going to find themselves at 4-3, and three, like I said, with two left. They'll definitely be in the playoffs. It's sure. just a matter of where the seed's going to end up if they get a home game here or if they have to go to Muncie or Canton. Well, our player of the game, our Web Weekly player of the game, Coach, I think it's pretty unanimous. You and I finally agree on something, <laughs> and we're going to agree on number 28, you want to shake my hand on camera? No, I'm we pointing can... to oh, you to say the name. Oh, you wanted to shake my hand. 23 carries, 220 yards, and a touchdown, and an interception. And a boatload of tackles. <laughs> and and he... an interception, And like he was the said. punter, and he punted the ball well, except for the one that went off the side of his foot. He did about everything right there. And the homecoming court. And he's on the homecoming court. Hey, let's thank our staff here. Thanks, Cam, for producing the game. Tony Birch on stats. Big Mike on camera. And my tag team partner, the coach, Rich Zalonis. Coach, another night in the books here. Great job here. Thanks to everybody at Web Weekly, powered by PA Sports Live. Great job spending time with you guys again. Next week, we'll see you up in my neck of the woods. Yes. We'll be in Hazleton for Hazleton and Williamsport. Last time we were up there, let's just give a little background, Coach. 65-64 game in, I think it was three overtimes. Williamsport won the game. I remember interviewing Coach Cruz. And I said, would you have went for two if they made it? And he said, yeah, I was hungry. That's <laughs> coach, a coach that Chuck always has a good one. That's a Coach Cruz. He coach said he Cruz was hungry. Comment. He wanted to get out of there. So as Coach Cruz is hungry, you get out of the way. So it's a um, good win for the Mountaineers as they start to look forward to the postseason. And they appear to be healthy tonight, although, we, as we said, we didn't see Kemmerer at all this evening. So hopefully he's healthy, even though he dressed. Uh, but South – well-deserved victory, Paul. All right. Well, let's sign off from here. 20 to nothing, the Mounties win. Good night, everybody. We'll see you next week.